wondering if this could be related to some kind of saloon because I don't see this very often where there's so many sodas and liquor pieces. We have another soda on the way out. And another. This is incredibly rare. There's only a handful of these in existence. This is quite the find. I'm in Yankton, South Dakota, and today I'm hoping to help solve a mystery. So the property records for the house behind me say it was built in 1900, although some earlier maps show buildings on the property. What I'm going to do is excavate the backyard and hopefully find some clues that could help tell the story. We'll head to the backyard. I'm out back toward the end of the property. I gridded out this area next to the garage and I found a spot to dig, I kicked some marks in the ground, I felt some objects down there. We'll get this one opened up. Soil, some ash layers, and have a couple pieces on the way out. There's a ironstone china. Wow. Okay, this is an oldie. Looks like a, a Jamaica ginger bottle. That's got to be pre-1890. And over here, it looks like it could be a soda. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Tops broke it off. Fred Schnauber, Yankton, Dakota Territory. That's a tombstone slug plate. He was the first bottler in the Dakotas. This is incredibly rare. There's only a handful of these in existence. This is quite the find. Here we go. It's like a mug-based blob top soda bottle. Fred Schnauber, Yankton, Dakota Territory. If this is intact, this will be one of the best bottles I've pulled. Oh, some more stuff around it. Let's see here. Slick drugstore bottle. F and F Company. I've never dug one from there. Fred Stauber, Yankton, Dakota Territory. Look at that. That's one of the best bottles I've dug. That is something else. 1870s, 1880s. I'd put it at circa 1880. Amazing. There's several pieces here. Looks like a, a little pill bottle of some sort. These always had paper labels on them. And all this dinnerware, whiteware broken plate. It has some kind of a stamp. It was English for sure. It's not enough to tell. Oh, I got some lime. It's a good sign we're in an outhouse pit. They'd throw lime in to neutralize the smell and disinfect it. Way back when. Looks like a Stoneware bean pot. Must be a, at least a large fragment of it because that's not coming out. I'm gonna stuff below it. Carefully pull it out here. Wow. Get some broken pieces in it. That's got some great age. I'd put that 
1870s, 80s. It's got a salt glazed top. Oh wow, some kind of glass pitcher. Yeah, it just crumbled. The dirt was probably holding it together. Pressed glass, I believe. We've got something strange here. I don't know what's going on. It looks like it could be a perfume bottle. It's, it's broken. Um, there's writing on it. Press sponge here. I've never seen anything like this before. If anyone knows what this is, drop a comment. That's wild. Got a little pill bottle. It's a turn mold piece, I believe. And a little extract bottle of some sort. No embossing. There's just all kinds of stuff down here. I can barely get my trowel in the ground. this iron stone. Oh wow, I think this is a shaving mug. Terribly broken. Some more iron stone. And more lime. <laughs> wow, what's going on with this pit? There's just all kinds of unusual pieces. That's uh, beautiful. I'm blown away. The bottom to another soda. Got some other pieces here. I'll just kind of dig it down. Uh, start. This looks like a. Oh, okay. Dr. Price's delicious flavoring extracts. That was a popular product in the Midwest in the 1870s and 80s. Excelsior Drugstore, Purdy and Brecht, Yankton, Dakota Territory. This is their first type of embossed bottle. Amazing. And there's more, this pit is just packed. Hamlin's Wizard Oil. I heard this was some good stuff. The ingredient list was plentiful. Uh, it's just the bottom. I think this is the fourth soda. We found some fragments of others. So that's a new record for Yankton. Another drugstore bottle. Uh, okay, one of those F and F companies. That's kind of cool. Uh, druggist prescription lip on it. champagne. I'm wondering if this could be related to some kind of saloon because I don't see this very often where there's so many sodas and liquor pieces. We have another soda on the way out. And another. I know, what is this? Oh, that's an early medicine. New Haven, Connecticut. The G.G. Clark Company, New Haven, Connecticut. Oh, that's really cool. There's another part to that glassware piece. This is unusual. This pattern's really something. What do we have? No embossing on it? I'm wondering if this is a saloon pit. There are a ton of sodas, liquor bottles. 15 on the bottom. That's a crude applied top though. Wow. There's a ton of odds and ends down here. Uh, 
first one had loosened up. Looks like some kind of a pressed glass creamer pitcher of some sort. It's got some great age to it. Broken liquor flask and a little pill bottle. Oh, this ironstone. Let's see. I've got a bunch of ironstone pieces. Okay, so that's Meekin. The uh, Meekin family was involved with pottery early on. A lot of their stuff made it to the US around the turn of the century. Let's see. Topped that liquor flask. <laughs> no way! <laughs> Look at that! That's wild! Some kind of preserve container. That color is something else. Okay, another part to that plate. Yeah, J&G Meekin. They had a, uh, a really popular pottery factory. jelly jar. Looks like uh, another drinking glass and another bottle on the way out. This pit is absolutely loaded. I don't even know if we're into the use layer yet. Let's see here. Early prescription bottle. No embossing. Uh, some kind of a uh, Glass. You know, I'm really wondering if this was a saloon pit. We'll see how it goes here. <laughs> Excelsior Drugstore, Purdy and Brecht, Yankton, Dakota Territory. Stuff everywhere. Another uh, little pill vial. A base to that cup. Some kind of medicine. Uh, Hamlin's wizard oil. Looks like the shoulder blew out when they threw it down way back when. Or maybe it hit up against this. No embossing, just an oil bottle of some sort, I think. Sewing machine oil. Whoa! That's an awesome pattern. This is some transfer wear. The handle broke off of it, you can see. That must have been why they threw it down. This even has embossing on or uh, transfer wear on the inside. That color is wild. Look at that. No end inside. I think we're just getting into a use layer. Looks like uh, some kind of liquor flask. Wow. It's packed in there. Oh, that's a knife edge. That's a true coffin whiskey there. When I say knife edge, you see the sides are pointed. The shoe fly flask took the place of these in the 1880s. Let's see. Okay, there's some kind of paneled bottle here. Another Hamlin's wizard oil. This one's about ready to fall out. Another drugstore bottle. Another Dakota Territory drugstore bottle. Purdy and Breck, Yankton, Dakota Territory. This, uh, okay, yeah, here's another one. They were just all over the place. Another uh, drugstore bottle. This is a French square style. No embossing. I see some embossing. Another drugstore bottle. 
another territory. Broken windows. Oh, it's got a paper label. No embossing, it's too far gone. Oh yeah, there's some seeds. We're definitely in an old outhouse pit. And another Dakota Territory drugstore bottle. Now this thing here, looks like some kind of liquor bottle. Oh, some rocks down here. I'm amazed the bottle survived. Looks like a tool top English ale. I'm fairly convinced we're in a saloon pit. There's bar glasses, sodas, liquor bottles. Here's an early piece. That's got a key mold bottom. Some kind of apothecary, I believe. There's a, yeah, we're into the, oh, there's a bottle underneath these. Some bar glasses, drink glasses. What's this? Excelsior Drugstore Yankton. Half ounce size, I believe. Another apothecary with maybe some of the medicine still inside of it. Could have been some kind of powder of some sort. And a little pill vial. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a marble sticking out of the side. And it's glass. Wow. It's a German swirl. This is a handmade marble. That is beautiful. Look at that design and the color. But yeah, there's stuff everywhere here. Let's see. Okay, yep. Atrask's magnetic ointment. I've dug a lot of these in Yankton. They're embossed on several panels. And what is this? Van, Van Stans, Strat, Stratina. I think I've dug one of these before. It's a cool little bottle. Yeah, I was running into all kinds of stuff. There's a unembossed extract. Excelsior Drugstore, yanked in. It's got the eagle with the mortar and pestle on it. These are awesome. And another one rolled out. Ralph M. Ward, druggist, yanked in Dakota Territory. Wow, that's a Millville round style. This was patented in 1878. I don't even know where that one rolled out of. This is wild. You know, some kind of pressed glass piece for serving. Horseshoe, classic. I'm working my way over. There's another soda bottle. It's a. Uh, broken. It's got a mug base. Another uh, Fred Schnauber yanked in Dakota Territory. 
Wow, I felt something underneath it as well. Look at, oh, whoa. So that is a blob soda. That's pre-1880 there, predates the Hutchinson. There's a couple bottles sticking out of the wall here. Looks like a little unembossed piece, maybe a Blake style prescription bottle, drugstore. Oh, little turn mold pill vial, held tiny pills. Now there's a big piece here. It's a, okay, it's cracked. It's a big canning jar. Looks like a Mason's patent. These are, oh, super early. Mason's patent, November 30th, 1858. That's a, wow, that's a ground lip, half gallon size. Now, I've found a ton of broken soda pieces, and I saw the bottom. <laughs> oh, no. That's uh, Fred Schnauber yanked in Dakota Territory. That's a pony-style blob soda, 1870s all the way. I'm solid into a use layer. There's soda bottle pieces everywhere in here. I've never seen anything like it. little uh, possible prescription bottle, just a round piece, generic, no embossing. And yanked in Dakota Territory. I want some kind of circular glass object here. Oh, there's a bottle inside. Looks like a little perfume, maybe even a sample type perfume. That's a small one. And this looks like it was some kind of a pressed glass vase. Now it looks like the top's knocked off with a soda. But what do we have? A Hesselton Wheeler and Company Yankton DT. Yankton Dakota Territory. Ah, oh, that's a bummer the top's knocked off. So I can barely get my trowel through again. Bottles everywhere. Some kind of toiletry, a perfume, maybe a cologne. Oh yeah, the chalice. Another drinking glass. <laughs> this little bottle rolled out. Excelsior Drugstore, Yankton. That's a little quarter ounce thing. Blake style, no embossing. Looks like a marmalade container. Oh, Gray and Sons patent, Portobello. This was, yeah, some kind of marmalade or jelly possibly. things just keep falling out. Another toiletry product, cologne. I do find a lot of these in saloon pits. Another Blake style prescription bottle, drugstore. Some more bottles. I have some embossing. Let's see. Excelsior Drugstore, Yankton. And, uh, tops knocked off with this one. Yeah, another Excelsior. Wow, they're everywhere. Unembossed.
Excelsior Drugstore, Yankton, Dakota Territory. And another. Well, looks like some kind of a porcelain figurine. That's really cool. A children's toy or something. I probed and this pit drops at least a couple more feet. I'm just gonna take down this little bench I was standing on. Based on the rest of what I've dug, there should be some more stuff buried in here. Had a beer bottle possibly. Oh yeah, solid use layer. Lime. Unembossed drugstore bottle. Huh. What do we have here? Ah, oh, that's an oldie LG company. This is an early beer. You can see the top was broken when they pried the cork out. That's an applied top. That is awesome. Mexican Mustang Liniment, Lion Manufacturing Company, New York. This is a classic old style bottle. They were in business, I believe, since the 1840s. This one dates back to the 1880s, I suppose. I'm about six feet down, it's a narrow pit, not a lot of room, but I'm working my way across and still a few more pieces here. Broken ironstone coffee cup. Let's see. Could be a beer. Okay, uh, one of these, got the horseshoe on the bottom. It's a jelly jar of some sort. Northwestern Homeopathic Pharmacy, Chicago. I've dug these here in Yankton before. That's an early bottle. Okay, seaweed pattern chamber pot. That's gotta be 1870s. That's a cool pattern. And what is this? It's like a big crock or something on the way out. And some more bottles. <laughs> That's some coffee cups inside of it. Look at that, it's got a gold rim it looks like, and that one's just a plain white wire piece. And the sulk glazed crock, no maker's mark I can find. Let's 
see. Whoa, that's an iron pond till base. That's pre-Civil War. <laughs> that's amazing. These are hardly ever found in the Dakotas. Oh, this is the last section here. It's been a remarkable pit. Looks like some, some of that broken seaweed pattern. Chamber pot, some chicken bones, maybe rat, rat bones. Sometimes rats would fall down these. Broken up picnic flask. That's 1880s for sure. Blue drinking glass. That's unusual to get those colors on that early, uh, early dinnerware. Pie crust lantern top. Oh, uh, shoulders blown out. Frank Miller's crown dressing, New York. Some broken coffee cups, plenty of seeds. This was a well used outhouse pit. More of that chamber pot. This pit is done. The pit's all finished up. This was something else. There's a hull. Wow, we've got that canning jar, a food bottle. Look at all these sodas. This is the most territory sodas I've pulled out of a spot here in Yankton. Got that liquor bottle, the small pill bottles up there. Beer and an English ale. All these drugstore bottles. Many Dakota territory. Up here we've got these extracts. Some medicines, pharmaceutical pieces, all those bar glasses. I confirmed this was no doubt a saloon pit based on these contents. So we'll get this pit filled back in and hit the road. If you notice the roof line, it's angled a bit. I believe that's called a Mansford style roof. That's typical of an 1880s house. And here's the backyard we gridded and probed a good portion and actually found a spot to dig right over there. We'll get the topsoil off next. out through the topsoil. A couple dinnerware fragments. Got a Bennington marble clay, a file, some round nails. Everything here is circa 1900. And there's what may be our first whole piece here. Still a bit into the topsoil, so it's hard to dig through. But it softens up soon, I probed down. Looks like a medicine, maybe an extract bottle. For the teeth and breath, fragrant sozodont, Van Buskirks. That's decent, that's circa 1900, a tooled top. Oral care product, obviously. There's uh, layers of ash we're getting into. You can see that gray color, it may actually be wood ash that indicates an earlier site. Oh wow, that's a wide pie crust top lantern chimney. Wow, that's definitely pre-1900. It's had some amazing age. Same with this. Wow, it's an old mixing bowl of some sort. And, uh, oh, here we go. 
This is one of the most recognizable bottles out there. Look at that. That's a, that's an applied top. Wow, okay, uh, Warner's Safe Cure. It's from Rochester, New York. This has a key mold bottom. This is likely 1880s. So there's a common error on these bottles where the hinges to the safe are on the left-hand side. Looks like uh, this isn't the error version. Oh, here's the tooled top. You can see the glass looks like it's slightly dripping down. And when I say a key mold bottom, you'll see the mark here in these lines. When the mold was pressed together, it was pressed together like a key. So one side had this round part, the other this, and it closed together. That's an awesome piece, and we're definitely on the right track here. We have something very special going on here. So this is wood ash. This predates when coal was readily available, when they were still chopping down trees in the area, likely. This seems to be 1870s. Got another piece of that mixing bowl. That is really something. Hopefully I can find all the pieces. Looks like some kind of a drugstore bottle here. Kind of wedged in. <laughs> okay, I recognize these. I've dug well over 100 outhouse pits here in Yankton. And this style is what I believe to be the earliest pharmacy bottles used. This was likely from Purdy & Breck's drugstore. It looks like a French square, but this could actually predate that style. And this bottom here, it's, yeah, I can tell it was broken, but look at the age of this. Look at the iridescence. That is truly amazing. And we have a classic, looks like another Warner's. There's a ton of bricks that were thrown in here, so I'm just kind of carefully digging around, trying not to damage anything. Another key mold. Warner's, okay, it's the right-handed hinges. A crude applied top. <laughs> this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Looks like it has a kind of cavity that opened up in this pit could be a can of some sort. There's been a lot of cans. And another Warner's. <laughs> Look at that. Another applied top. Right-handed hinges, Warner's safe, kidney, and liver cure. Rochester, New York. We're into this wood ash layer, and you can see there's three pieces couple paneled and possibly a liquor flask. I'll pull this one out first. Oh wow, this is a strap side liquor bottle. That's gotta be 1870s, it could even be 1860s. That's really something. Looks like a Extract, maybe a medicine. Oh, this paper label, but it's too far gone to read. And oh, seven seals of golden wonder. Kennedy and Company, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'd never dug one of these before. Wow. That's really something. Uh, knife edge coffin whiskey flask. This is so early. There's some writing on this one. Burnett's. I'm, Burnett's from Boston. This was a flavoring extract. It was really popular in the 1870s. I actually dug some of these on a military fort. Well, the pit keeps going. Got a couple bottles and a plate. Looks like an ironstone china plate. There's a, oh wow. 
That's unusual. So the mark on it is actually uh, faded out for some reason. Must have been during the manufacturing process. This is an ironstone china plate. It's kind of a standard dinnerware piece for the day. And uh, looks like an extract bottle of some sort. No embossing. And another one. This one actually says something on it. Chicago. Huh. I hadn't seen one of these before either. Huck Knox. Huck and Knox. That's uh, that's some unusual names. And then you see Chicago on this side. Based on this, it was some kind of medicine like a proprietary medicine or some kind of extract. That's unusual. We have six pieces exposed. I dug through a bunch of rusted cans. You can still see some of them are showing there. Uh, looks like some kind of aqua bottle. I've seen these before. It's the Worcestershire sauce. Yep. Leon Perrins. Oh, this is an old one. Now sometimes, yep. Okay, this is one of the first Lee and Perrins bottles. I believe this is an English glass company and a Worcestershire sauce originated from England. You can see there, uh, Lee and Perrins. This is definitely 1870s. That is really something. like another extract bottle of some sort. And another, maybe a medicine, no embossing though. Let's see. This one's kind of buried underneath all of them. Maybe it's a, might be a, beer glass, bar glass of some sort. Wow, that was an ornate flower planter. Look at all that stamping on it. Oh wow, could it be intact? <laughs> That thing is intact. It's got a crack in it. That must have been why it was thrown down. But that's really cool. That'll display nicely. All right. Another unembossed possible extract bottle. And this one's got the top knocked off. Oh wow. Garden City Chemical Works. Okay, yeah, Huck and Knox, Chicago. So yeah, some kind of, it must have been some kind of extract company. Found another pocket of bottles. There's some embossing on this one. We got some deep aqua color. I've been working on this. It's a extract of some sort. Uh Oh wow, someone's extract that's uh, still intact, the paper letter, that's awesome. Now this one, there's something under it too. Okay, this one's broken. It's uh, another one of those chemical works. I pulled up a couple of these, I believe. Uh, all right, here we go. Shiloh's System Vitalizer, Leroy, New York, SC Wells and Company. That's a beautiful color. That is really something that Deep Aqua is beautiful. Let's 
like it may be a similar piece next to it. Oh, these are packed in. Yep. Oh, Shiloh's Consumption Cure, SC Wells, the Roy, New York. Yeah, those are a beautiful aqua color. Seems like there's a pocket of bottles here. Might be a couple more. Oh, another part to that bowl. Huh. I think this was a hawk wine. Hawk wine bottle, it's broken. I may have found bottom down about five feet. Uh, a few more bottles it looks like. Uh, this one could be an ink. Mucilage, okay, so this was a type of glue, a paste used to uh, stick paper together, whatever else. Another one of these early drugstore bottles uh, I believe these were from the original Mills and Purdy drugstore. They're never embossed here, but that's great age. And we got all oh, the gem. That's an early canning jar. It's got to be 1870s. And. Maybe the rest of that flower planter. Looks like uh, that's some more broken pieces down there. Oh, look at that. That is something that's stamping on that thing. It's beautiful. It's got some great age. Oh, wow. Part to an early bowl. It's 1860s or 70s. And it looks like we have mocha wear. It must have just emptied out the broken junk in the kitchen and thrown it down, but that's awesome. That's, I believe, called the seaweed pattern. You see, it kind of looks like a piece of seaweed. I was looking at this mucilage bottle and noticed it has a ground lip and that there is also something sticking out of it. So I mentioned this was a paste used for gluing things together, maybe craft projects, and I thought that was really cool. It might actually be a horsehair brush, but there's actually a couple pieces on the way out down here. Bottle and a couple uh, pottery, earthenware pieces. Uh, get this one up top first. Oh wow, might actually be intact. All these rusty cans are hard to kind of navigate through. Okay, the top's broken on it. Put the handles there. So it's ironstone china. Oh, that's an old stamp. At Powell and Bishop. Alright. Now right on bottom is an aqua piece. Oh wow. Liver Invigorator. Dr. Sanford's Liver Invigorator, New York. That's a key mold bottom on it. See that? Liver Invigorator. Wow, an applied top. Uh, some ironstone whiteware. Oh, that is something. 
some kind of milk glass. Look at that, there's uh, some berries or something on there, some kind of stamp, that's really cool. Well, still working my way across, I may not have found bottom. Actually, the dimensions are a bit irregular, so I'm hitting some deeper pockets, but got four bottles on the way out here. Uh, this one's aqua and paneled. see okay LM green proprietor Woodbury New Jersey yep I've dug these before uh, always a sign of a good early pit LM green Woodbury New Jersey would have had a paper label nothing embossed on the front so maybe an extract okay another one of these Garden City Chemical Works bottles. That's from uh, Chicago. That's great condition though. Not a lot of iridescence or anything on it. Good clean glass. And another one. Plenty of wood ash. Ah, this is an oldie here. If this had some embossing, it would be something. Nothing home on it. That's a really early bottle though, look at that. Likely a drugstore bottle. May have been from Mills and Purdy. That's unusual, a whiteware piece. But it's got this colored design, maybe some berries or something on it there. I've never seen something like that. There's more of it. There's no maker's mark on it, unfortunately. You can see that design, that's really cool. I cleared the way across the bottom and didn't hit much until this corner, last part of the pit. There's a few pieces here. It looks like some kind of a, a pitcher. It's broken. Oh, it wasn't my doing, but it's, it's got a really nice pattern to it. And it looks like it's footed. And all the pieces are here, so I should be able to piece it back together. That's really early, it might be pressed glass. It looks like another one of those drugstore bottles. Yeah, probably a Macaulay. Uh, no stamp on this one, but I believe it's another one of those William Macaulay Glassworks uh, prescription bottles. And a plate. Part of a tea set. Wow, that that's amazing. Um, look at that. That's an early style. This could be mid 1800s, actually. It looks like there's one piece left here. Some kind of an extract bottle. No embossing on it. I think this pit's done. The pits all finished up was roughly six feet deep, five feet long, four feet wide. Everything dated back to the solid 1870s. This was an absolute historic jackpot. You got some extract bottles, a liquor flask, some medicines, drugstore bottles, that teeth and breath piece, Worcestershire sauce, a bunch of broken dishes. Mucilage bottle, some of those garden cities, some extracts, and many more broken dinnerware pieces. Well, that's about it. We'll get it filled back in. that that's likely some glass that crunchiness is stove ashes 
I noticed there's some color change down there. So this is definitely worth digging. down a couple of feet and I ran into a few pieces here. Looks like some paneled bottles. Uh, so this one's got a tooled top. No embossing on it though. This one looks familiar. There we go. Okay. Chaz. Chaz H. Fletcher's Castoria. That's early machine made. You can see one panel has Castoria. The other is uh, Chaz H. Fletcher's signature. It was a castor oil bottle. Makes sense uh, if this is an outhouse pit, why this would be here. It looks like some kind of porcelain dinnerware piece. Oh, cool. Nice floral pattern. And a uh, Check for a stamping on it. Haviland. Yeah, this is a popular high-end dinnerware. Ah, set back in the day. I find them all across the Midwest. We're getting into some kind of use layer. I saw some uh, lime and a few undigested seeds. Some pieces are showing here as well. It's kind of ink. What is this? Lonergan's, Lonergan's Patented Oilers, Philadelphia. I've never dug one of these before. It's got a ground lip on it. I don't know if it's screwed into something or just held oil for something. It's like a little ink bottle. Sometimes these are embossed. Uh, might actually have some black ink or black ink in it. It's a tooled top. Oh, this thing's been in the way. What is it? Oh yeah, you can see some undigested seeds in there. Looks like the top is some kind of dinner dinnerware piece. It's got a hole in the bottom, some kind of decorative design. Interesting. Looks like the lid to a child's tea set. Some kind of semi-porcelain piece. Oh, okay, here's the base. Here we go. Must have been a, some kind of candy dish or something. That's kind of cool. Both pieces are there. Oh, this is older. Uh, Warranted Stone China, Meller Taylor and Company, England. It's got the stamp, it's just a plain whiteware piece otherwise. Broken canning jar. This pit has some good age. That's a salt glazed egg beater crock. The solid use layer, there's all kinds of stuff down here. Some heavier glass pieces as well, some really thick glass. I'm having trouble getting this out. Have to dig around it. Oh, some kind of a drinking glass, like a footed goblet. That one's got a really cool pattern on it though. It looks like some fruit and some leaves. thing. Wow. A 
it's not cut glass, but that is some major piece there. Maybe like a punch bowl or something. Machine made of some sort. And some stonework croc pieces. Another three-piece mold English ale with an applied top. And another. Acme Blacking, trademark. Wolf and Randolph, Philadelphia. That's a shoe polish, I believe. I can't even get my trowel through. There's so much stuff packed in here. Some more pressed glass pieces. Whoa! <laughs> That's wild! Look at that! What is that? Got some kind of like angel on it. Whoa! Maybe a perfume bottle or an oil lamp base? That's insane. It's got a tooled top. We're down into a solid use layer. You can see the soil color changed. That's leftover remains from an outhouse. And here's a few pieces that were thrown down. Looks like some kind of drinking glass or jelly jar. And yeah, the shoulder's blown out. But this is a turn mold English ale bottle. You know what, a three piece mold. Kind of figurine. Look at that. That's a looks like it held on to something. Could have been a, a novelty cup of some sort. That's semi porcelain, I believe. What an ornate handle. It's got a possibly some 24 karat gold leaf on it. You can see it shine there. This has been sticking out, it's broken, but that's an unusual pattern. Yeah, some kind of uh, cup for a tea set of some sort, I believe. Yeah, continuing across with my test hole, still solid use layers. Got a bottle here, another one here. Uh, this one's paneled. It's like just an unembossed extract bottle. This looks like a prescription bottle. Philadelphia Oval Style, uh, McCulley Glass Company, Mark. No other embossing. And there's just stuff all over in here. Solid use layer. Ironstone China Plate. Porcelain Royale, W and F, something England, and then it says Columbia. It's just a plain whiteware piece, but it's a really faint stamp on this.
another blacking bottle, partial label, but you can't read it. Another one of those Acme blackings, jeweled top. J&G Meek in Hanley, England. It's one of the most common stamps I find on these white work pieces. We're down about four feet and the pit continues underneath this garage. And I solved the mystery as to what was stamped on that other plate. This one has a better stamping. It's W and E Corn, Porcelain Royale, Columbia, England. And down below here, I've got some pieces on the way out. Uh, first one I uncovered was a looks like a mason jar, a really old mason jar. Here it is. It's, okay it's broken. These, these are usually broken. But uh, yeah this is an original mason's patent November 30th 1858. It's got that cross on there that's actually called the Hero Cross. It's from the Hero Glassworks. This is definitely 1870s, 1880s right in there. Two more bottles to get some of this stuff out. Okay, this has some pattern on it. This might be a transferware piece. C. Hatsworth, England. See a partial stamp there. It's got a rope design and then some leaves on the other side, that brown color. I find a lot of this pattern here in Yankton. Okay, uh, shoe fly style liquor flask full of ground water. It's a uh, 1890s, I suppose. Whoa, the Oakley Soap and Perfumery Company, New York. It's got a tooled top. It's almost like a hawk wine style. I've never seen one of these before. There's the embossing. It's, uh, it looks like a beer bottle, almost like a wee beer or something, but it's from a perfumery company. That's very unusual. Continuing into the use layer, no end in sight. Ah, some little square bottle. Oh, another Acme Blacking. This been a popular product in the house. Solid artifacts down here. Broken windows. Another little drinking glass. All right. <laughs> this one's almost intact. Patented November 26, 1867. I believe that's John Landis Mason's patent. He invented the mason jar. This one's also got the hero cross on it. This one's really faintly embossed. It's hard to see, but it's right there. That's the mark of the hero glassworks. Oh, I think that's the globe top to a lamp. A kerosene lamp or something. That's ornate, that's kinda cool. Let's see all these specks. These are undigested seeds from the outhouse. Mainly raspberry and tomato is what I've found. Here's a little unembossed drugstore bottle, a Philadelphia oval style, tooled top. Underneath it here, there's this big ironstone piece. I'm gonna try pulling it up. It's uh, kind of stuck in. Maybe some pieces will come up with it. Wow. That's an oldie there. Got an A stamped into it. I think it's a butter churn. That's a really old one. I mean, could that be 1860s maybe? You can see the letter A stamped in it right there. 
and it's a kind of typical salt glazed piece. So there's so much stuff down here, I can't even get my trowel through the ground. Just glassware everywhere, falling out. Some kind of studded uh, bowl of some sort, some kind of decorative piece. Philadelphia Oval drugstore bottle, no embossing on it. That's unusual. It's got a ground lip, some kind of decorative glass. I have no idea what the contents were. pharmaceutical bottle of some sort. Looks like a three-piece mold, tooled top. <laughs> Whoa, this would have been something. I think it was, okay, yeah, like a German water bottle. These are found in early sites across the Dakotas. figurine. Goodwin Brothers. It's an English made ironstone whiteware, possible chamber pot or water pitcher bottom. Unembossed extract. Possibly a blacking bottle, shoe polish of some sort, no embossing though. Okay, little uh, mustard bottle, it's a tooled top. Uh, Dr. S. Pitcher's Castoria, another one of those castor oil medicines, it's a tooled top on this one. Bossing on any of these. Uh, F and F Company. Another drugstore bottle. Another little boss drugstore bottle, Philadelphia Oval style, I believe. like some kind of ground lip bottle. It's got a basket weave pattern on it. It could have been an ink or something. Oh, and I cleared away the dirt from that butter churn. I saw all this here in some soft ground. Unembossed square bottle. I'm amazed at how much stuff is in this pit. Yeah, this is kind of in the way. Oh, there's another bottle underneath it. Another one of those W and E corns. You can see the stamp on there. It's just a plain whiteware piece. I have some embossing. Uh, Boston. Okay, Burnett's Standard Flavoring Extracts. This was a popular product back around the turn of the century. Looks like maybe a couple English ales. It's more of those three-piece 
green glass. Oh, this actually might be something different. Uh, okay, yeah. These are typical of an 1880s, 90s pit. Uh, JSP whiskey, that's a JSP monogram on there. I believe that's the initials of the guy who imported these. Could have been a malt extract. A Meller Taylor and Company. It's a nice stamp. Like a, a just ironstone china, some ironstone china stamp on the bottom, and a, some floral pattern on the side. Okay, Lion Manufacturing Company, New York. Uh, Mexican Mustang liniment tooled top. Another unembossed Philadelphia oval style drugstore bottle. H. Alcock and Company, England. Some more ironstone whiteware. It could be some kind of toiletry bottle. Broken top. Wow, I'm amazed at how much stuff is in here. Ironstone China, English, whiteware piece, some kind of bowl of some sort. I'm down about five feet and we found bottom. There's a corner right here I've been cleaning out. That looks like a couple drinking glasses, maybe jelly tumblers. This stuff all over in here. That's a really cool color. I love that these are almost always clear, so anytime I get a different color, it's interesting. It's cool pink. It looks like a, a drinking glass, maybe a jelly tumbler of some sort. Okay, it's a broken marble. That's a beautiful German swirl. It's actually broken in half. That's really cool. Top's knocked off. Some kind of utility chemical bottle though. Would have had a tooled top. A little L.H. Thomas ink bottle, tooled top. Those are the these are the smallest sizes they made, I believe. Tooled top prescription bottle. And another. This one's a Philadelphia oval style made by the McCulley Glassworks.
Whoa, that's a broken blob top soda bottle. That's from the 1870s. That predates everything in this pit. Oh, still working my way across the side of the pit here. Looks like a little uh, ink bottle, maybe mucilage. It's a tooled top. A uh, broken drugstore bottle. Oh well, okay. Pickle bottle, pickled goods container. Could it contain relish or uh, pickles, preserves of some sort? I found this clay marble. Looks like it could be a shooter marble. A cool piece. We've nearly finished this pit. We found all four walls. And just cleaning out this last area. Now there's definitely some pieces left in here though. Looks like a ink bottle, no embossing, tooled top. Okay, another shoe polish. Whitmore from Boston, also a tooled top. Huh, a little, uh, I think they call these a hand lamp. The handle broke, so they must have thrown it. I don't know, I've been going out to the outhouse with it probably. Huh. What is this? Billings Clap and Company, Boston. It's a key mold bottom. That's an old medicine. Could have been some kind of cod liver oil or something. There's the edge. Another tooled top ink bottle. Around the final corner, there's like a couple extract bottles. We have left here uh, Dr. Price's delicious flavoring extracts. Dr. S. Pitcher's Castoria. This pit is done. The pits all finished up was roughly six feet deep, four feet wide, three feet long. Here's the hall. Everything was typical of a residence and dated back to the 1890s. Got some English ale bottles, some drugstore bottles, condiments, a couple liquor flasks, some odds and ends, those medicines, inks, blackings, that amber bottle from New York, and some extracts. This was a good dig though. We'll get it filled back in.